Hi, supporters of Cycle to Evolve. I want to thank you so much for getting me here across the United States. It's been two years since I embarked on this journey, and I wanted to at least repay you for what you've given me, what was the reason for the ride, what I experienced during the ride, as well as post-ride, what's going on in my life. So thank you. So prior to the ride, well, it's kind of funny. I transitioned from the culinary world, from cooking and, you know, fine wine, where I really enjoyed myself, to finance. Um, spent a little bit of time cold calling on Wall Street, tutelage of Sean Michael Murphy at the Maxim Group at the time. It was 2007. There was a lot of stuff going on. The supposition of all of our calls was we have one world, seven billion people, and not enough to go around to support our consumer life. Yet the market kind of went a little nuts. Bear Stearns collapsed. Things were a little crazy. So like, whoa, whoa, this is exciting. Uh, a huge amount of you know, uh, masculine energy, which I really enjoy. I'm going to go learn more. I'm going to go become a financial equity analyst. And so I enrolled in CUNY Baruch in an executive program at a state school. So it was a bit expensive. And I uh, got my master's degree in financial statement analysis and securities valuation. What ended up happening was week two of my degree, Lehman Brothers collapsed. And the market went to poop. It was like poof, just collapsed, went nuts. Everything fell. The whole thing was kind of a house of cards anyways. Mortgage collapse, a lot of mortgage fraud, a lot of just bad behavior going on. Oh, man, you know, like, is that what I need to do to get ahead in the world? And, uh, yeah, I've got my own character flaws for sure. But I was just not really engaged or enthralled with, with such a career choice. It was strapped with now 100 k of debt. Graduated, you know, spent a few years doing my thing in New York, figuring things out, and all of a sudden, um, Occupy Wall Street happened. A few years later, America finally realized the freaking hood pulled over our heads during the financial collapse. You know, in 2008, you couldn't have a conversation about, you know, skewed wealth dynamics or the 1% you know, control of society at the time. You would have been thought of as a crazy communist and kicked out of the house. Well, 2016, we almost got a, a beautiful Jewish man from Brooklyn elected on that platform. All of a sudden, I started to see that just like when I was cold calling back in 2007, 2008, one world, seven billion people, not enough stuff to go around to support our consumer lifestyles. Here were a bunch of beautiful hippies saying the same thing, just camping out in the middle of somewhere saying, this ain't working. And it was interesting. It's like, what do you do next? Where do we go from there? It was a lot of the, the, the critique at the time, but it's like, first you have to understand the problem before you can create a solution. And the problem of globalized, oligarchical, look that word up on your spare time, oligarchical capitalism, not real capitalism. The, the problems created by such a system are just so convoluted. How do we scale this idea? How do we, you know, those of us in Silicon Valley, which is where I'm at now, um, think about scaling, amplifying messaging quite a bit. But at that, how do you inspire people? To go beyond just occupying homes and saying F the man, which is fun for its spare time. But so I was like, how am I going to scale this messaging? I don't have a profit motive. I'm not like everybody else. I'm not looking to buy a home or do a thing. I put my foot in the ground, warrior style, about this student loan issue. And that's a lifetime game I'm playing. So what else am I going to do? I'm going to scale inspirational messaging. I'm going to try to get you and you and you and you all wicked excited about transforming society. This is Evolve 1.0, which at the time was just cycle to evolve. I had all these grand aspirations and grand plans. It's like, hey, we're going to change all of society through grassroots empowered capitalism. It's not you know, the kind of grassroots that only 30% actually vote. And this would be the kind of grassroots, you know, empowered humanity where we were to know that every dollar we spend creates and destroys every company with which we spend it on. That's the damn truth. And know that that same power that we have with every dollar we spend, we can tie those dollars back into companies we want and fund politicians and vote for politicians that also have those same ethos. And I was like, yes, we're going to do we're this. We're going to change America through Cycle to Evolve. I tried to raise 11000 bucks. I raised $1,100. So the market very clearly showed me uh, either you're crazy, uh, too ambitious, or not clear enough. I had 12 bucks a day to live off of. Thank I had nothing. And it couldn't have been a better experience. Humbled me. I had to ask for help. I had to open my heart. and It was really moving. One of the most important moments of my life. 
in the handout in the appendix I have a lot of notes about you know like notable experiences touch my heart and my soul so I can finish with the ride figuring things out like okay I just got a bunch of people excited about something though I don't even know what <laughs> what the heck did I just do so much energy running through me and I don't want to conform to a society I want to transform phase one was a journey of self discovery let me take let me collect all this energy and focus it on one hyper focused idea and just like empowered consumers, it's like, what has the most energy? That, oh, well, what we eat, or what fuels our body and our cells, as well as its impact on the environment. I don't know if you know, but like traditional agriculture is wicked messed up when it comes down to ecological impact. So people didn't understand what I was talking about the first time. <laughs> the second time, when I rode through Central Valley, and like we can restore land and actually increase uh, property values. Year, fifteen thousand dollar an acre property, restore it to thirty to thirty five thousand dollar an acre property in a seven to twelve year time frame. Not the biggest return on investment, big institutional money, but solid. And if it were driven by the empowered consumer in the marketplace, like, hey, I want to regenerate ecosystems. I want to take carbon out of the atmosphere and put it in the soil and reverse climate change. Uh, first, you have to believe in it. Secondly, you'd have to believe that you're empowered enough to fix it. Didn't work. Cycled. Not many people got it outside the echo chamber of people who already get that message. So I went in the wilderness for 40 days. Like, well, let me awaken the Christ. Let me awaken the Moses within. Let me, let me be a better version of myself. Maybe it's because my cells are full of shadow and darkness. Maybe it's because I haven't worked on myself enough. I can't get through to anyone else. And maybe I don't believe in myself in some way. So there I was, one backpack, no bike, and no social media. I had my goal zero, solar panel, and battery pack, and a computer for a little while. I was trying to find out what's going on inside myself, you know? Like, what makes me tick? It's in the Mendocino National Forest, as I said, and it's serene and beautiful. And on day like 24, I saw this guy. Stand up in the woods not too far from me. Start making deer calls. Coo! Coo! I'm like, I'm in hunting season. <laughs> Sitting in a green bug net, camouflage, meditating before bedtime. <laughs> Wicked open. Like, every cell I could feel. Every bit of nature I was, like, connected to. And this guy's making noise. I'm like, is he hunting? <laughs> Start to hear a lot of crawling. Guys in ghillie suits. It was like furry camouflage things. Started to crawl wicked close to me. They had a four wheeler. It was like a sound like a golf cart and a dog. Come to find out, I didn't know this before I went in. Mexican drug cartels, squat, uh, national forest land, and the cartels take the vocal cords out of their dogs. All of a sudden, the guy gets real close to me inches away now crawling and he's like so I told him my life story I was like hey kind of a nonconformist nah, I don't believe in the man of all people I'm not going to tell on you told him how if I was in charge of this national forest I'd have fruit and nut trees and little edible bushes and arugula and you know like lettuces and I'd turn it into somewhat of an edible forest so that other meditative beings can come and just experience the cathartic element of I don't know I call it the Holy Spirit but you can call it whatever you want life energy or the chi or whatever there's just something so beautiful about, about it and I I don't walk in paths I don't I don't walk like everybody else in life or when I'm alone in the woods so I walked along the rivers I walked, I walked along the streams and every mile and a half and some I, black pipes where these guys are sucking water up, irrigating their illegal marijuana setups. And they kept surrounding me, they kept moving around and stuff, and I was like, and I just started to pray. Mostly Psalm 23, specifically the line, I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, and I'll fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff are beside me. A couple days later, I heard their little four-wheeler pull up, and I heard the collar of the dog, the silent dog that never spoke. I jumped in the river. <laughs> Thank God my Uncle Toby took me to the movies a lot when I was a kid. 
But I somehow knew that if you swim in the water, you, you, your smell won't rub off. And paid basically cat and mouse and didn't let a fire, didn't eat any food for a bunch of days. Had to hitchhike out. I couldn't just like, couldn't just leave in my car. I don't have one. So there's only like two or three places you could even leave the forest. And I figured if I like left in a hurry that they'd have dudes waiting in those places. I figured I'll stay and pray. And JC, when he did 40 Days in the Wilderness, he saw he saw the prince of the world on the other side who took him places. I ain't no JC, so. What I saw was the Mexican cartels. By the grace of God, I was let out. It was about a year ago now. Late June. My dad was there. It was somewhere, a random business trip, and we hung out in Oakland. Post ride, I got back on my feet a bit. I'm now pretty blessed. I'm business analyst at a startup here in, in San Francisco. You know, I'm continuing my activism because that's in my blood, it's in my DNA. I can't see through the veil, see that the emperor has no clothes, and sit back and say everything's chill. Not in the if you found this at all intriguing, click on to the next video. We don't need to dwell in mediocrity. We can all evolve. Thanks for your time.